guys, so welcome to my latest sit down video. This video is all about how much does it really cost to have a horse. So you already bought your horse, how much does it actually cost to keep a horse? Uh, so many of you guys asked me that and I wanna share it with you right now in this video. your horse and you're so excited and you bring it home and you just don't even have any idea how much it's gonna cost um, that's what happened to us we had kind of an idea or we thought we did and we brought our horses home and boy did things explode financially anyway um, I'm gonna share with you guys how much it costs us to have our horses and then you can uh, make judgments here or there um, to see if you can make a budget for your own horse so you know how much it's gonna cost roughly before you buy it. On one side, I'll put how much it costs per month, and on the other side, or vice versa, I will put how much it costs for two horses, because we're paying for two horses. So um, if you are lucky enough to have your own farm and you just bring your horse home and park it in your yard, you are so lucky, and I can't wait for a day that that happens to us. But if you're like me and a lot of other people, then you need to find a place to board your horse, and that is the First, a biggest financial commitment to owning a horse is board, boarding your horse. So to board our horse, um, it costs us $400 a month for each horse. So um, obviously it's gonna cost us $800 a month because we have two horses. Keep in mind when you're figuring out board costs that we live in a very rural area and our barn is a very small, small barn. Um, in bigger, more populated areas, board can be anywhere over a thousand dollars i know people in really really huge areas um that pay five thousand dollars for board so ours is four hundred dollars a month per horse but you might want to look around and see what you can get um in your area moving on to the next the most constant thing that we pay for is grain. Um, our board co covers almost everything at the barn, including turnout and turn in and blanketing and a bunch of other things like that, as well as hay. But we do pay for our own grain. So um, grain is obviously gonna be a very a huge variable between uh, horses and between locations. Um, basically what I pay uh, Storm eats about two bags of grain a month. No, Storm eats about three, three? Storm eats about three bags of grain a month and Stella eats um, about one bag of grain a month. And basically, um, we have two different kinds of grain. They just get regular grain and then they get um, something to help build their top line, uh, which is more expensive. So I buy about four bags of grain a month. And uh, Stella only gets the stuff to help with the vitamins and building her top line. And Storm gets grain as well as his hay. Um, so I spend about $160 on grain per month for two horses. Uh, clearly the next constant cost that you would have if you had horses is the farrier. Everybody needs a farrier. I love our farrier. He, our horses are hot shod, which I absolutely love. He makes their shoes and, and sizes them right to their feet. The ends are tucked under, so we lose very few shoes ever. Um, because he tucks them up underneath there and they don't step on them and I love him He is just is the kindest most gentle soul and he's so smart Like I, I thought farriers had such a minimal part in horses. They have a massive part in um, Helping you take care of your horse. Anyway, so our farrier cost um, that we pay every six weeks is a bit off. We pay $130 every six weeks to have our horse's shoes put on. Every other month, we pay $90 to have them reset. So they only get a new pair of shoes every 12 weeks, and in between, they get the same ones put back on, they just get them reset. So 
it varies depending upon, but we pay $130 um, times two to have our horse get new shoes. Another constant cost at our barn for our horses is deworming. It's another thing that you have to do and it varies because we vary the dewormer that we use so that we're catching every different kind of strain um, to make sure that our horses are worm free. We deworm without fail every 12 weeks. Our instructor is on it like nobody's business. So every three months, we spend between 15 and $20 per horse for worming. Other costs that I didn't understand and I couldn't really figure out and how to budget them when we were planning our first horse is obviously the vet. So the vet is someone that you're gonna call anytime you have a problem or any kind of time you have any kind of questions or concerns with your horse. Um, if you're lucky like us, then you're a barn person taking care of your barn will be super knowledgeable. Like our girl is so knowledgeable. She knows, she knows, she knows, she knows when to call the vet, when to email the vet, when to uh, message him. We don't have to have the vet come out every single time we have a question. Um, our vet is available through a text message all the time and he is amazing. He is amazing. And, um, but what we did find is that yearly there are some constant costs associated with the vet and this is them. Um, so every year you're gonna wanna have your horses vaccinated, especially if you're going to shows, you don't wanna be going to shows and them getting sick or you don't wanna go to show or you don't want even if you're not going to shows, you don't want other horses going to shows and bringing back germs to your horse that just stayed home. So it costs us about $300 per horse one time a year for vaccinations, and that includes boosters. So the vet would um, come back a second time to give a booster for whatever vaccinations needed a booster. So that is $300 um, once a year for a vaccination. The other constant that um, we found with our horses was that every year the vet comes and checks their teeth and um, sees what needs to be done. Um, we paid for two hand floats this year um, for our lease horse who's gone now and for Stella, our new horse. They both had their, their teeth floated. And it was really cheap actually. I thought it would be a lot more and it was around $140 per um, horse that we had to have their teeth floated. So this year we paid for two horses to get their teeth floated. Another I'm gonna say this is another constant cost, something that you pay um, that is a sta like a standard cost when you have a horse. And I know it's not for everybody, but I think that it really should be, um, is a chiropractor. So our barn has the chiropractor come in once a year or more often if needed, but all the horses are checked once a year for any um, back issues or any neck issues or anything that could just be um, not right and need and they just need to be adjusted. So it costs $130 per horse for the for the chiropractor to come and check your horse. We paid for two chiropractic visits this year so far. However, one of our horses did need a follow up because Storm had a little bit of a stiffness in a couple of different spots and she wanted to come back and reassess him and adjust him again. So we will have paid this year three uh, chiropractic visits for our horses at $130 each. Some of the people who requested this video actually were asking about how much does it cost to have a horse because I'm about to get my first horse. So I'm gonna include a few things that are not constant costs things that you're not gonna always have to pay, but things that, that do come up and do shock you because we have had some surprise costs associated with getting a new horse. So obviously uh, there is the um, cost associated with, associated with the vet check. We paid $300 for our vet check, which is probably a really cheap price um, in our area, that's what we paid. You will probably be want to research um, different vets and what their cost is wherever you live. Another cost, big cost that we paid this year was we paid $750 to have our mare um, hauled to us, which means that she was really far away, like four hours away and an eight hour drive for us. And so we decided to hire a hauler 
he went there, picked her up, and brought her back, and I think it was $750. So that was another additional cost when you're getting a horse. Make sure you know how you're gonna get it, how you're gonna get it to your barn, um, because that was a big one for us. Other things to consider when you buy a horse is that if you're gonna go to shows, then there are some extra costs associated with that namely how you're gonna get your horse to shows if you don't have a horse trailer like we didn't our horses were hauled along with the rest of the horses at our barn um, uh, from our instructor and the cost of hauling was divided by all the people going to the show so it was pretty mi minimal for us we paid i think 30 dollars for each time we went to a show because there were enough kids going to divide the cost um, but it'll be different for you. So that is something that you might want to consider when getting a horse is that um, even the cost of showing increases when you have your own horse because you need to get your horse there. And the last thing that I'm gonna discuss, um, uh, another kind of hidden cost, but not really hidden because you know it's there, but you don't know how much it's gonna be, is buying all the stuff. People always joke that we go to the tech store too often, or people always are commenting saying that we're buying too much stuff or that we're going to the tech store too often, but in all honesty, the st amount of stuff you need for your horse is, astronomical it is insane so obviously the more horses that you buy the more stuff that you need and even if you already have a horse and you buy another one there's such a good chance that all the stuff that you have is not gonna fit your new horse I mean obviously halters and bridles and stuff that are standard sizes they they are gonna be easy to fit but there are so many things that you need to buy your horse when you buy your horse and it's not just a saddle not just a saddle pad and a bridle and a halter and a lead rope there are so many other things if you're jumping you're gonna want jump boots if um, you're traveling with your horse to shows even bringing your horse back and forth then you're gonna need a helmet for their head to protect it and you're gonna need a break leather or breakaway halter and you're gonna need a shipping boots and then also if you take your horse's places, like we've been taking our horse's places recently, um, you're gonna need extra hay to carry along in your trailer. You're gonna need hay bags, even if you're just going for a show. You're gonna need water buckets for your trailer. You're gonna need, um, there are just, there's just so many extra things that you don't think about. Um, if you're showing with your horse, you're gonna need all the things for showing for them, all the products, because let's let's face it, if you are using a school horse, then there's a chance that you're not buying all the products, all the shampoos, all the show sheen, all the braiding stuff, the braiding kits, the, the, you're just buying the stuff for you. But when you have your own horse, you have to include all of those things so that your barn would let you use or you would use to, to get your sh your horse ready for a show when it, you have your own horse you buy all that stuff so um the towels the saddle soap the the saddle condition the end is never in sight when you have a horse there is always something that you need to buy we've been buying and buying and buying for months now and we still need more stuff so anyway, uh, that's it. I'm sure I've forgotten something. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you have to buy or pay for at your barn that I didn't list in my list. But anyway, I hope that helps and I'm really excited for you. Being a new horse is such an amazing experience. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments below as well. Um, what other kind of sit down videos would you guys like to see? But anyway, thank you. See you in my next video. Bye. Don't forget to make sure to hit that subscribe button down below.